Hi bag makers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I'm with Sew Yours. Today we are sewing up my latest sewing pattern. Please meet the Glam and Go cosmetic bag. Don't you just love the shape and size of this cute little bag right here? I also really like the clear window on the top of the bag. This allows me to feature my makeup brushes and also see the contents of my Glam and Go. I have done a separate introductory video that goes over the hardware, fabric, interfacings, and stabilizers that I do recommend for your Glam and Go, as well as all of the features this bag has to offer. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description box below so you guys can go ahead and check that out. You can purchase the pattern at sewyours.com. After creating the Glam and Go cosmetic bag, I decided to go ahead and give you guys a few bonus pattern pieces so that you can go ahead and sew up your own crossbody bag if you'd like to go ahead and do that, like I have right over here to my left side. With the crossbody bag, you can do a two-tone exterior, or you can make a whole solid panel right here on the front and the back exterior, which allows you to feature a larger print. Today's sewing tutorial is all about the cosmetic bag. So we are gonna go ahead and switch over to the overhead camera, look at all of the supplies that you're gonna need for your Glam and Go, and start sewing it up today. All right, I got all of my fabric and my hardware all prepped and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and explain what I've got here in just a moment. I did want to let you know that you can purchase hardware, zipper tape, zipper pulls, the rose gold clips on the table, as well as fold over elastic on our website at sewyours.com. We also sell woven interfacing for your cotton fabrics on the website, in addition to many other items. We have about 200 items that we are selling currently on our website, so you guys can go ahead and shop any of your bag making supplies that you need. I did not make up hardware kits for this bag because the hardware is very minimal, as you can see right here, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. You can use any combination of vinyl, cork, waterproof canvas, or quilting cotton to make your Glam and Go bag. It's completely up to you. It depends on your skill level as well as what your sewing machine can handle. So as you can see on this one, I chose a uh, printed vinyl for my exterior. And for my lining, I went with a waterproof canvas. Now I do want to point out that there are additional products that you can apply to your lining if you wanna make them stain resistant and water repellent. Those are called liquid vinyl or Odie coat. I'll put links in the description box below if you guys are interested in purchasing those products. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to go ahead and apply that to your lining fabric before you begin sewing. For my Glam and Go, I've decided to do the clear vinyl. Now you can go with a printed clear vinyl or a holographic vinyl, vinyl, whatever you'd like, but I definitely like the look of a um, transparent or a semi-transparent vinyl for the exterior top. So this is pattern piece A, and you need two of those. All of my patterns include these little tabs so you can keep everything organized. For my bottom panel right here, which is pattern piece B, I am going with quilting cotton. I have ironed on woven interfacing to my quilting cotton pieces. So anywhere you're using quilting cotton, make sure you iron woven interfacing on. And then I've also ironed, centered, centered and ironed my stabilizer. I've chosen to do deck of a light here. And the stabilizer is pattern piece B1. You'll need to go ahead and cut out two of those stabilizers and iron them to your exterior pieces. And then you are going to need two lining pieces. Since I am using waterproof canvas, I don't need any woven interfacing on those. So that is my exterior um, and lining bottom panels. Moving on to our handle, our handle connector, and our um, zipper panels right here. You are going to need zipper tape. Number five zipper tape is what is recommended, and one to two zipper pulls. These are our handmade zipper pulls on our website. We have pattern piece C. This is our front zipper panel. You need one exterior and one lining. And that is this narrow zipper panel along the front right here. Next, I'm going to show you the back zipper panel, which is the wider zipper panel. And that is pattern piece D. You need one exterior, one lining, and you also need a stabilizer. So I've got deck of a light centered and ironed on here, and that is D1. Here is our handle, which is pattern piece E. I've prepped that out, I'll explain that later. We have our handle. We need one exterior of those. I've also prepped that out. Um, that is not a pattern piece. Uh, you are gonna cut that per the measurements on the cutting guide. It is just a straight cut. 
And then moving on to our gusset, the gusset wraps around the, the bottom right here of the bag. So our gusset is pattern piece F. You need one exterior and one lining. You'll also need F1, which is our Decavo lights, uh, centered and ironed on to the wrong side of our gusset. And this is optional, but it gives a little bit added um, structure to the bottom of your bag. This is our bottom stabilizer, and this is F2. So I've gone ahead and ironed that on already. Here I have my elastic cover and two pieces of three eighths of an inch elastic. Now, the elastic cover is completely optional here. You don't need to do that if you are fine with having your elastic shown in the bag, but I like to go ahead and cover my elastic. Um, you could also purchase colorful elastic um, online. I'll put a link in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing um, elastic that matches your lining. So you can guys can go ahead and do that. So for the elastic covers, those need to be quilt and cotton only. You do not iron any woven interfacing to those. We wanna keep them nice and pliable because they are going to be covering the elastic and they need to be able to um, uh, stretch and bend and all that. So your elastic also to point out here, you can go with 3 8 of an inch elastic or wider if you'd like. If you decide to go with a wider elastic, I give you the formula to cut the appropriate width of elastic cover that you're gonna need for your um, uh, elastic in your lining. One additional pattern piece that you may choose to go ahead and cut out, which I did not do in this video here, is a zipper tab. During testing, a few of the pattern testers suggested adding a zipper tab to the cosmetic bag to allow you to have something to grab onto whenever you open and close your Glam & Go bag. So I didn't do it to any of mine. I didn't feel like it was necessary, but if you do like to have something to grab onto, feel free to go ahead and construct that zipper tab as written in the pattern. Next, you're going to need binding. I am using waterproof canvas. I've cut my binding to one inch wide, so I've got my binding right here. Other uh, binding options that you have is fold over elastic. These are all the fold over elastic colors that we sell on our website. We are getting low in stock in these colors right here. Um, some of them are out of stock, but we are fully stocked in these colors right here. If you don't wanna use fold over elastic, this is one inch wide. Then you can also use some extra uh, wide double fold bias tape, which is a half inch wide that you purchase at the store. So that is an option for you as well. Lastly, we have our hardware. So you only need two one inch wide rectangle rings, a bag tag, which is optional, and four, and four rivets. These are nine millimeter rivets. It's gonna depend on the fabrics that you're using as far as um, the size of your rivets. So anywhere from six millimeter to nine millimeter rivets. And that is what we need in order to start making our Glam & Go bag. Go ahead and grab your handle and your handle connector pattern piece E. We are gonna go ahead and prep out both the handle and handle connector, which I've done right here. Draw a line down the length of your handle and your handle connector. Apply double-sided tape along both sides of the line that you've drawn. And then we are going to remove the double-sided tape, or I should say the paper backing. Fold this in to meet the center line. Do that for both sides as well as for the handle connector. Once you fold it in those edges to meet the center line, you're going to put the handle connector to the side and we are going to fold the handle once more in half. Clip this into place. Next, we're gonna go ahead and top stitch the left and the right hand sides at a quarter of an inch for both your handle and handle connector. Once you have those sewn, you're gonna take your handle connector and we are going to fold it in half and cut it in half to create two handle connectors. Now you're gonna go ahead and draw a line down the center of your handle connectors, which is at one and a half inches in from one of the short raw edges and draw your line. It's probably difficult to see here on camera. Do that for both of your handle connectors. So this is the wrong side of the handle connector. And then for your handle, you're gonna go ahead and measure in two and a half inches from the short raw edge. And you're gonna go ahead and draw a line and repeat that for the opposite side as well. Now go ahead and grab your leather hole punch if you have one or whatever uh, tool that you have to create holes for your rivets. So you're gonna need two rivets and your two rectangle rings. 
grab one rectangle ring and you're going to go ahead and fold that around the handle here matching up the raw edge the short raw edge here of our handle to that line that we drew at two and a half inches and now we need to determine where we're going to go ahead and place our rivet so i am taking a look here and i'm going to make sure that i kind of center it and that's where i'd like to place uh, my rivet so now i'm going to go ahead and remove the rectangle ring punch the first hole place the rectangle ring back over matching up that line the two and a half inch line and now i can go ahead and get my placement for my second hole by transferring through to the hole that i punched And now I can insert my rivet. I'll take this over to my press to set my rivet. All right, I've gone ahead and set my rivet. So this is what it looks like. Repeat the same process for the opposite side. And there is our handle. Now let's get our handle connectors ready. So all we need to do now for the handle connector is we're gonna go ahead and make sure that your handle is wrong side up. So you see the raw edges right here. And our handle connector is wrong side up. You're gonna feed that through, take that short raw edge right here to meet that center line that you marked and drew on there and do the same thing for the opposite side. Grab your clips to clip this into place and then repeat for the opposite side. Okay, so our handle with our handle connectors are now prepped and ready for when we need to sew those onto our zipper panel later. So we're just gonna set this aside now. Now we're gonna go ahead and start working on our zipper panel. I've already started just a little bit right here, so let me explain what I did. So here I have my exterior and my lining of my front zipper panel. This is pattern piece C. I also have my number five zipper tape with my zipper pull or pulls already installed on them. And what I've done is placed the exterior zipper panel right sides together with the zipper tape matching up one of the raw edges right there with the zipper tape i'm going to continue clipping along here now my zipper is a little bit longer i will trim that down once i get it sewn into place i'm going to base stitch along this edge right here at an eighth of an inch okay, my zipper is now base stitched onto the exterior and i trimmed the zipper tape so that it was even with my uh, front zipper panel right there now we need to go ahead and grab the lining front zipper panel. We are going to place the right side of the front zipper panel with the wrong side of the zipper tape. I'm going to clip this into place and I'm going to now go ahead and sew down the side right, the side right here at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once that is sewn into place, we're going to turn everything right side out and expose our zipper right here. And I am gonna finger press and start clipping the exterior and the lining so that they are wrong sides together. So let me go ahead and continue to do that. And then once I do that, I am gonna top stitch here at an eighth of an inch. Okay, I've got the front zipper panel now top stitched. And we are going to repeat the same exact process for the back zipper panel, which is D. You should already have your D1 stabilizer centered and ironed onto that. So let's just go ahead now and sew, or I should say base stitch this into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I've sewn the exterior back zipper panel to my zipper tape. Now it's time to grab the lining and place the, the lining right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper tape, just like we did on the front zipper panel. Clip that into place and sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, now you're gonna go ahead and turn everything right side out, clip this into place and top stitch with an eighth of an inch. My zipper panel has now been top stitched. I also went around the exterior here and base stitched that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now it's time for us to go ahead and place our handle with our handle connectors that we constructed earlier. And in order to do that, we're gonna grab pattern piece D. Now, as you can see right here, I have cut a hole out on the pattern piece and that is the same size as our 
handle connector right here. There is two on the pattern piece, but you only really need to go ahead and cut one out. Uh, this, if you printed this in color, I believe the color was a pale orange um, for that rectangle. So you're gonna go ahead and cut that out like I've done right here. You need to find the center of your zipper panel by folding this into half. And you're gonna go ahead and clip a notch down the center with your scissors so you know what your center is. Then you're going to take the bottom center here of pattern piece D, which is your back zipper panel piece. Match that up with the bottom raw edge center right here of our back zipper panel. And I would go ahead and clip that into place just to keep it into place. Now from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your air erasable pen and all you really need to do is draw along this inner uh, portion right here. So this vertical line on the uh, cutout. If you prefer, you could do the whole thing, but it's really only necessary to go ahead and do on this one, the left side. And then once I've done that, I'll take the pattern piece and I'll flip it over. And repeat this for the opposite side. So now I'm going to do the right side of the rectangle and trace that. You're going to match up this line that you drew with this edge of the handle connector. And for this side, it's going to be this edge of the handle connector. Now you can use some double sided tape if you'd like to kind of get this secured into place, but I find it's just um, easier to go ahead and do one uh, side at a time and just kind of hold it into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this down where the line is, hold this into place, remove my clips when I'm over at my sewing machine, and then I'm gonna go ahead and um, stitch a rectangle along the outside edge an eighth of an inch away from these edges right here. And then as close as I can get to the rectangle ring, I'll go ahead and get that done. And I'll do the same thing for the opposite side. All right, my handle is now attached along with my handle connectors. This is what it looks should look like from the side. I just realized that I didn't mention earlier to add a rivet to the center of each of your strap connectors. So this is your remaining two rivets. So you can go ahead and add that. So now it's time for us to go ahead and grab our gusset, which is pattern piece F, with your gusset stabilizer and your um, bottom stabilizer already centered and ironed on like I have right here. And we are gonna work first with the exterior portion. Just a reminder that this is the time that you're gonna go ahead and add your zipper tabs to both sides of your gusset, making sure that you go ahead and center it. Follow along with the written instructions in the pattern on how to go ahead and do this. You're going to match that up with the right side of the zipper panel we just constructed. So place right sides together and clip this into place. I'm gonna take this over to your sewing machine, base stitch this into place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, once we have that base stitched into place, we're gonna go ahead now and apply the lining portion of our gusset to the lining side. So we are matching right sides together. Clip this into place and sew this with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you have sewn that, you're gonna go ahead now and uh, trim down your seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch. Turn everything right side out, just like this. And we are gonna go come in and we are gonna sew along the gusset right here at an eighth of an inch. Now that that has been top stitched, we are gonna repeat the same exact process for the opposite side. Now that I've got both sides top stitch, we need to go ahead and base stitch our gusset sides together. So you're gonna go ahead and base stitch along this left side and the right side. All right, the gusset is now base stitched into place and that was an eighth of an inch base stitch along those sides. So our gusset is now complete. We can go ahead and set this aside. All right, now it's time to work on our elastic cover. If you are covering up your elastic with some cotton fabric, I have already done one right here. All you need to do is go ahead and fold this right sides together, 
clip it into place and you are going to go ahead and sew down the edge at a quarter of an inch and then take that and trim down your seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch once you've got that done for both pieces you're going to grab a tiny little uh, safety pin just like this or if you have another preferred method for turning fabric you can go ahead and use that such as a turning tool but all you need to do is clip this on to the end of the cotton fabric this is one of the most time consuming parts of this particular pattern. It's just getting this little tube turned right side out. So here I have clipped this on. I'm going to push this down inside of the fabric tube and continue to feed this through and turn this right side out. So I'm gonna get that done for both pieces of my elastic cover and I will come back and show you. All right, I've got both of my elastic covers turned right side out and I've started to feed my elastic through the tube. So I just like I did with the um, cotton fabric and the safety pin, I clipped the safety pin to the end of my elastic, which is inside right here. And I'm gonna continue to feed this through till it reaches the opposite side. I'm gonna do that for both sides or uh, both pieces of my elastic cover. So now that it's even with the fabric, I don't want to go any further than that. So I'm going to tack that down with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then get it to come to even to this side of the cotton fabric and tack that down with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and do that for both of my elastic and elastic covers. I've got the elastic now covered with cotton fabric. So now it's time for us to grab our uh, lining bottom panels, which are B. So I've got two of them right here. Grab your uh, pattern piece B as well for the placement guides for your elastic. So I've already done this, but all you need to do is place the pattern a little bit offset from the fabric itself. And there's a little line here that says place top edge of elastic here. Just grab your air erasable pen and transfer over that marking. That is one and a half inches down from this top straight edge. So you can either use your ruler or use your pattern piece. Transfer that over to the opposite side as well and your other lining panel. Now, if you've chosen to maybe do some mesh pockets instead of elastic or a mesh pocket on one side and elastic on the other, then at this point, you can go ahead and construct your pocket um, however you'd like to do so. But we are going to be doing elastic for both of our lining pieces. So the next step that you want to do is you want to find the center of your elastic. So just go ahead and fold that in half and use your air erasable pen to transfer the marking over there. Um, my pen is purple and my fabric is purple, so it's too hard to see, but you can do that for both of them. Once you've done that, go ahead and clip your elastic and you wanna make sure that you have the folded edge up and the side that has the seam to the bottom. Place the folded edge on that line right there and then clip this into place. Make sure your elastic is not twisted. From here, we can go ahead and tack it down with an eighth of an inch uh, seam allowance on both sides. And then wherever you found your center, you can go ahead and tack it down in the center. So I also made a center mark that is a half, one and a half inches down from the center. And that'll tell me where to place the top edge of the elastic. So I'll tack that down there. So generally I like the back uh, lining panel. So the one here in the back to just have a divider down the center. And then that gives me the extra room here to go ahead and hold my pallets in place. Or if you are using this as a toiletry bag, then you can put some uh, product bottles in those larger sections right there. For the front, I go ahead and uh, divide that up into multiple sections for my makeup brushes. However you wanna go ahead and divide up your uh, sections is completely up to you. That's going to be based upon whatever you decide to place in your glam and go bag. So I'm just gonna randomly um, divide mine up into multiple sections for my front panel. I do recommend keeping your makeup brushes if that's what you're going to keep in your glam and go in the front panel uh, because then you can easily get them in and out and not have to worry about bending your bristles um, because you're gonna be, if you put them in the backside, you would have to try to work around pulling them out around the, um, the back zipper panel right here. So keep your brushes in the front. Plus it also looks really cute with the brushes in the front um, when you can see it through the window. So that is what I recommend for your lining. 
Here is a pattern tester tip. If you are using a much wider elastic as pictured right here than I am, consider leaving the elastic out of the left and right hand side of the seam allowances. That way you don't experience the bag puckering in when you insert your products into the elastic itself. All you need to do is go ahead and fold in those raw edges of the elastic and sew it down with a little rectangle as you can see here on the photograph. I'm going to go ahead and tack down my center on this one and then I am going to go ahead and tack down this one in multiple locations um, so I can have my makeup brushes for the front lining. Okay, my elastic is now tacked down and you can better see what I did from the back side right here. So this is the one that's going to be on the back of the bag. I've got to divide it down the center and this one is going to be in the front of the bag and I've divided that in multiple locations for my makeup brushes. Moving on to our exterior, we're gonna start with the bottom panel, which is your exterior pieces, a B. You need to have your woven interfacing if you're using cotton on it. And you're also going to need your stabilizer centered and ironed onto it. That is B1, which I've already got right here. And at this point, if you are adding a bag tag, you're gonna go ahead and do that now. I suggest placing your bag tag one and a quarter inches down from this top straight edge in the center. Now, if your bag tag is a different size, then you would go ahead and place it differently. It's completely up to you. We're gonna, but I'm going to go ahead now and install my bag tag. My bag tag is now installed, and I've added some duct tape to the back side so it protects the prongs from rubbing through over time to the lining. So that is my exterior front, and this one's going to be my exterior back. You're going to need to grab your exterior top pieces, which is going to be your clear vinyl or semi-transparent um, vinyl. And we're going to work with one of the exterior bottom pieces right here. All you need to do is find your center on your vinyl piece right here by folding it into half. And it's hard to see because it's clear. And then we're going to clip a little notch here. I've already found the center of this one. So it's important that we're matching up our centers. Don't start by matching up the side or it's not going to be uh, the correct placement when you turn it right side out. So let's go ahead and match up our centers. And it's probably too hard to see on camera, but there's going to be a little overhang. You want that there because then when you turn it right side out, um, it's going to be a seamless curve right here. So there is a little overhang on both of our sides. From here, we're going to take this over to our sewing machine and base stitch this down with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do it for both your exterior front and your exterior back pieces. All right, my exterior top is now base stitched into place with my exterior bottom here. And now we need to grab our lining panels. So this is where you need to match up your lining panels appropriately. So because I want my uh, lining panel with the larger uh, gap here for larger products um, to be on the back, I'm gonna pair that up with my back panel. And then this one here is for my makeup brushes and I wanna pair that with my front panel, which is the one with the bag tag. So we'll be doing that. So now we need to go ahead and with the vi clear vinyl here, Sandwiched in between, we are going to place our lining and our exterior right sides together. Clip this into place, matching up the centers first. Repeat this for the remaining uh, back panels right here. Take this over to your sewing machine and sew that into place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now you're gonna turn everything right side out, matching up the uh, bottom panel, the exterior and the lining wrong sides together. Go ahead and finger press everything away from the clear vinyl. And then you are going to come in and you are going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch along the straight edge right here, which I have already done for my exterior front. So that is now top stitched. Then after that, you're going to go ahead and base stitch around the bottom curve right here to base stitch the exterior and the lining together. So I'm going to get that done. I have completed my front and back panels. So now we just need to grab our gusset that we previously constructed, which I have right here. You need to find the top and bottom centers of both your gusset as well as your front and back panels. So you just do that by uh, folding it into half and clipping a little notch. Do that for the top and the bottom and the opposite side as well. And then you're going to repeat that for your front and back pan panels, folding these into half and clipping right there. Do that for your top and your bottom. Now turn your gusset wrong side out. 
And we are gonna begin by working with the back zipper panel, which is the wider zipper, zipper panel and our back panel right here that we have. So this is the one without the bag tag that has the larger um, elastic openings right here. So you are gonna match the top center of your back panel to the center of your back zipper panel, matching right sides together. So here you can see we've got the right side inside on both of those. Clip the bottom center. And now I'm going to continue to clip all the way around the bag. I like to clip a, a, a couple clips to the left and then I do a couple clips to the right and then I switch to the top side. So that way everything is being clipped on evenly. So there is my bottom and I'll continue to clip around the top side and around the edges. So let me get that done. I've got my gusset clipped into place now. Now here is something to point out. I do recommend snipping into your gusset where the curve and the straight edge come together right here. So on the gusset, not the panel here. So you're gonna go ahead and once you've got everything kind of clipped into place, you'll go ahead and clip a notch in the gusset like I've got right here. I did have to do a couple of extra just to ease that around the corner. That's going to depend on the types of fabrics and stabilizers that you're using as far as how much or how little you need to snip in within your seam allowance on your gusset. So you'll do that for both of these points right here where the straight edge and the curved edge come um, together at a point uh, to get that to kind of curve around. So here is where I'm at. So we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna lay this on my machine and begin sewing from the bottom center right here around the bag at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I decided to go ahead and insert this clip of me sewing the Kiki crossbody. It's a separate sewing tutorial available on my YouTube channel. For anybody who is newer to doing bags with binding, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you a visual right here. Um, this is basically the same exact process if you are making the Kiki crossbody or if you're making the Glam and Go cosmetic bag. So just a visual so you can kind of see how I'm moving along and using my stiletto to go around those curves. All right, I've got that now sewn into place. So the next step is to go ahead and add our binding. So if you're using your waterproof canvas, fold over elastic or double fold bias tape, you're gonna grab that now. All I'm gonna do now is fold my waterproof canvas binding in half as I go. And I am gonna clip this at the bottom center and just continue to work around the bag, clipping this into place. My binding is now clipped into place. So now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and start sewing it on just like I did when I sewed the gusset to the back panel. So this time I'm going to sew this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I am going to go ahead and change my thread color to match my binding. That way it's not as obvious. The reason that I didn't change my thread color to the lining right here is because Whenever you turn your bag right side out, sometimes you can see some like stress pulling of stitches through here and you don't want to see a bright color thread with a dark exterior because it really shows up. So that's why I did it this way. I'd rather have a little bit of uh, darker stitching kind of peeking through if I need to in the lining. It's not as noticeable as if it was on the exterior of the bag. So let me go ahead and sew this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Here's another short clip of me attaching my binding to my Kiki crossbody, which is the same exact process as doing it on the Glam and Go. My binding is now sewn into place. So now we're just gonna repeat the same exact process for the opposite um, panel, which is your front panel. And we're gonna go ahead and clip that into place, matching top and bottom centers. Go ahead and open up your zipper at this point. That way we can turn it later on. So let me go ahead and get this clipped together, sewn together, and then I am going to go ahead and add my binding. All that is left to do now is turn it right side out. 
And then once you've got it turned right side out, you're going to go ahead and really work around that binding and get it to curve. And the binding really does act like a spine for the bag, giving it really good structure. So I just work around with my hands and I'm pushing the binding up inside so you don't really see it. And then kind of pushing along the edges here to give it a nice crisp folded edge right here. And then you can kind of squeeze around the edges here, and push out your binding. And then we'll do the same for this top edge. The binding fits really nicely along the front zipper panel, kind of nests right in there. Another good tip is whenever you do finish a bag is you can go ahead and stuff it really full with some paper or if you don't have like packing paper, use a bunch of hand towels and washcloths and you can stuff it inside the bag and kind of once it's all stuffed, you kind of press it into the shape that you want and let it sit like that for about 24 hours and it gives it um, some nice good shape and form to it. All right, so here's what she is looking like. I'm going to go ahead and load her up with my makeup and makeup brushes, and I'll come back to show you what she looks like all filled up. So here is my Glam and Go with everything loaded up inside. So let me show you the inside. So there is all of my makeup brushes, and you can see I've got quite a bit of products inside of there. So your Glam and Go is great for on the go. So if you are traveling, you can keep this as your cosmetic bag or your toiletry bag. But I personally use mine every single day as I don't have any good bathroom drawers where I like to do my makeup. So I keep everything in my Glam and Go. I store this bag in my linen closet and then I can take it out whenever I'm ready to apply my makeup and have everything nice and handy and organized in one location. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to sew along with me and make your very own Glam and Go cosmetic bag. If you haven't already purchased the pattern or you need bag making supplies, please visit our website at sewyours.com. Whenever you do finish your Glam and Go, please stop by our Facebook group and share photos of your completed bag. We always love seeing what you make with our sewing patterns. Now that I've sewn mine, it's time to sew yours. Mm -hmm.